What it is, guys, Josh with the Pride Productions back in UE4 with a UMG tutorial. Number nine, a ninth UMG tutorial. And I couldn't decide whether to make this a UMG tutorial or a blueprinting tutorial. So I played rock, paper, scissors with myself and I lost. So UMG it is. I'm glad to be back. I took a little break from my birthday. You guys are amazing. Love you, miss you. Let's jump in. Today we're going to talk about creating some damage text when we shoot something. So what's cool is I've already got it set up here. We got the first person shooter. I got this gun, right? Boom. It's like a boom. And so you can get excited with that if you want, like me. You don't have to. Now, the point is, inside of my DP folder, which you know I'm inside of, I got my first-person character. I got the first-person character projectile, which is very important because we're going to use that. And then I got this rock, bro. You know what I'm saying? So what's going to happen is we're going to have a rock. We're going to shoot the rock. And what's going to happen is we're going to have a, a floating damage text kind of pop up how we want it to. So what we need first is we need a we need to go user interface and create a widget blueprint. Now, obviously, I'm just going to name that DT underscore widget. For damage text, you know what I'm saying? That's what, that's what DT stands for, bro. Now, there's several thousand ways to do this. We're going to keep it really easy because I just want to show you guys the gist of how to make the damage the damage text float correctly or like how I like it. So we're going to make this super easy. We're just going to grab a text, a text and just put it right in the middle. Anchor it to the middle, right? And then you can kind of see if it's in the middle perfectly. And again, this is not exactly how I would do it, but we're just going to do that for now. That's all it is. There's one more thing we need to do. With the text selected, and you may want to name it, and I'm going to name it what it needs to be, damage text. Okay, that's what we'll name it. There is damage text, so what we'll do is we'll create it, make it a variable. Is it a variable? It is now, bro, because we need to change that text. We may not want it to say that. We may want it to say something else, and we'll figure that out later. Now, let's move it over here. You notice we have our second window right here. Boom, let's go back. And what we want to do first is we need to be able to bring a rock into the world here and have it collide with the projectile. Now, check this out. If you go to the first person projectile and you click on this capsule component here and you scroll down to the, the collision, you'll notice that it is a projectile type. That's very important. Remember that. We need to know that. Okay. We'll keep that opened. We need to create our blueprint out of our rock now, right? Right click, blueprint. Actor, or we'll name him Rock BP, bro. Huh? Is that is that it? Now let's grab our Rock BP. It's over here because you E4 know how we do. Duh. We're gonna grab the rock. Now go back here. Just grab the rock. Drag it into this new window. You got snap. There you got your rock. Now to make sure it works, we're gonna grab our Rock BP. And just drag it into the world right about there. Just make sure we like the size of it. I know it's going through the floor a little bit right there, bro. We don't care. Okay, there it is. Boom. Yeah. You don't. Okay, it's fine. You know, the, the balls are going straight through the rock. And that's not what's important. Because what we're going to do is we're going to create a collision box around this rock. And what we're going to do is we're going to have the, 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 we're going to, when the, when the, when the projectile hits the collision box, it's going to trigger all the nonsense. And it's also going to destroy the projectile. projectile. It's not going to look perfect, but you guys will at least have an idea of how you can do this. So check it out. Let's go back to our rock BP and let's create that box. You can scroll down here, add a component to box collision. Now I'm going to set it to about 3.5, bro, maybe three. Uh, maybe maybe 3.5 there we go okay because i got it locked right here so it created it, it changed all the axes and i'm gonna make it up a little bring it up a little bit like that bring it up a little bit like this it doesn't need to be that big but at least we know it's there now that's cool is we're gonna go down to the collision with the box selected and make sure that it's set to we'll go to custom let's set a custom collision here world dynamic is fine okay world dynamic is fine as long as the projectile will overlap it and we may have to look at that but the point is we're going to ignore everything but we're going to overlap the projectile okay that's all we want literally we want that to happen so now we can go into the, the into like the in the, in, in the event graph here i can't talk and we can go ahead and make sure that it's working so right click on the box add an event on actor begin overlap now this is what we want to do we want to make sure that this actor is the first person projectile so let's cast to oh god Oh, God. First person projectile. Now, don't get the first person ca character or whatever. Get the first person projectile. And all we need to do is here's what we're going to do. We're going to type in a print string. Okay, we're going to type in a little print string and just make sure it works. And if it works, we'll be good. And we'll go from there. Like I said, you know, little tests here and there. Little tests. We want to see if every time I shoot a bullet up, boom. You see them yell, hell, that's what I'm talking about, son. Okay, all kind of little hellers. Little hellers popping up, but that's not exactly, that's not what we're going to do. But let's leave that alone, and we're going to do a couple things. For now, let's grab the actor, this is the projectile, and destroy it. Okay, let's just destroy actor. And that's all we're going to do for now. We just wanted to make sure that we have 
We got a, we got a, we got a rock. We can shoot it, and boom. And as you can tell, it doesn't look like the ball goes through it anymore. Yeah, it's kind of funny looking because you can miss it a little bit. But I mean, I, 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 boom. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. But that's that's not that's not the point. You know what I'm saying? We're just we're just setting it up. We got a lot to do in this tutorial. Okay. So now that we have that kind of set up, we need to create a second blueprint. And that second blueprint is actually going to be the floating text. What we're going to do is we're going to spawn that blueprint to do its thing for us when we shoot the rock. So let's create a second blueprint. Go to blueprint class right here, bruh, actor. Okay, we're gonna name it floating text BP. I'm the BP. Okay, now, now just calm down, go over here, floating text, and we're gonna add a widget, right? We're gonna add the widget that we created, bro. Just go, just type in widget, we'll name it, uh, we're just name it. We're just name it. It's gonna be a widget, bro. Now, what we need to do is we need to go back over here. You can compile if you want to. Grab the widget we created, which is literally nothing right now, right? It's just text, and it says floating text on. It. If you look here, it just it just says text block, which is not doing it. But hold on, hold on, hold on, just relax. We got the widget selected. We go back to the floating text blueprint. Don't get confused. I got all kind of windows, and we go over here and we set it to be that. Okay, so now we have text block right there, huh? There we got it. Now we need to set it to screen. You know what I'm saying? And we need to set it to screen, and then we probably need to set it to a specific size. Now, if you look here, I mean, it just depends on how big you want to do it. So we're going we're gonna to test this out. That's how we're going to do it. We, we're going to test it out by going here. Let's go back. Back to our rock. You can tell that's our rock by going to the viewport. You can see here we got the rock in the box. You got to put the rock in the box. You got to put the rock in there, bro. You can't be you can't be afraid of it. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to spawn a blueprint. So you can type in the word spawn. And we're going to spawn an actor from class is what we're going to do. And actually, there's, there's, a, there's a few different ways to get it. You can get an AI from class. You can spawn actor from spawn actor from class, all that kind of stuff. But that's, that's what we're going to do. We're going to spawn an actor from class and what we're going to do is we're going to spawn that new blueprint we created let's compile because i'm getting all kind of nervous now let's grab the floating text bp go back in here make sure it's right there right and then for the for the act for the transform i'm not really worried about it at the moment but i kind of want it to be above it so you know what i think i'll do i'll do a get actor let's get an get actor location okay and then let's get a little plus sign Okay, because what you can do is you can plug the location into the transform, you know what I'm saying? So let's do a little plus, get a little, get a little plus right here, do a vector plus vector. And maybe we'll do it like uh, uh, like 200 above him. Let's see what happens there. Let's plug it in, do a little conversion, a little, little converting for you, bro. Make sure all your execution wires are plugged in there, and then we'll compile. And now what's going to happen is it's going to destroy the actor when we shoot the rock, and then it's going to spawn that blueprint. And you're just going to see text block. And just, that's all. It's gonna, just going to see text block. Okay, there it is. You got a little text block, baby. And here's the problem. You know, it's just going to keep spawning it in the exact same place. So we're creating blueprints over and over. Yeah, because you boom. You know what I'm talking about? That's awesome. The point is, it's working. So what we want to do now is, is a couple other things. You know what I'm saying? Like, we have a little bit of work to do. We have to make this blueprint here, this text blueprint that you can't see anything on. We have to make that thing come to life a little bit, right? So let's, let, let's work on that. Let's go to the event blueprint here, okay? And on event begin play, which is right here. And you can, if you, if you don't like that, once you drag something off of here, it'll kind of start. It'll, it'll do something for you. We're we're gonna do a sequence, okay? So type in the word sequence, and we're gonna plug this straight into it because we're gonna do two, two, two actions, okay? Because we need two timelines. One, we're gonna make the text fade out over time, and two, we're gonna have it go upward a little bit. So it's kind of like floating up in the air and disappearing at the same time. So we're gonna need a couple things. The first thing we're gonna need is we're going to need to cast to our blueprint because we need to get the text variable and all that stuff. Because right now, if you if you drag a line off here. And we need to get that damage text right here. Go back. We named it damage text, right? Let's go back in here. If we want to get the damage text, let's see if we can get, get damage text. You, it's not going to happen. You're not going to find it. You, it's not going to happen. We have to actually get, type in the word object here. Okay, type in object. If you type in the word object, you're gonna see you're gonna see several different things, but you can actually get the widget type or the or, or get act sorry, get user widget object is what you're looking for. And then from there, you can cast to your widget. Now, if you forgot what your widget was called, go down here. It's called the DT widget. Okay, no big deal. Up, up, up. I'm in the wrong window because we got all kind of windows, bro. And we're going to cast to the DT widget. Now, it'll probably do most of that work for you, but there you go. Now, now that you've casted to the widget up here, okay, we're, again, we're doing a sequence, so we're doing one up here. Now that we've casted the widget, we can get the text inside. Shut up. God. 
All right, anyway, so we're going to do a, get, we're going to get that damage text now, right? Boom, you know what I'm talking about? And now we can do a couple things. Every time it's spawned, we can set it to be a certain number, right? So what we can do is we can set the text, you know what I'm talking about? We can set the text to be whatever we want, you know what I mean? So that's the first thing we're going to do is we'll set the text. Now, this is going to be a little tricky. We're going to have to create a number, you know what I'm saying? So we want to actually have a number. So that's where it's going to get a little tricky. So we're going to rewind a little bit, go back here real fast, and we're going to create a variable. Now, it's going to create a variable, and it's going to be an integer, right? It's going to be a little integer right here, okay? That's all we're going to do. We're going to name it uh, damage. Yeah, damage amount or something like that, maybe you want to. And what we're going to do at the very beginning is set this damage amount to be a number. And then whatever that number is, we're going to plug it in there. But the reason I'm going to do it like that is I'm going to drag a little integer. And we'll do a little random integer in. Shut up! God. All right, so we're going to do like between 15 and 25, bro. Just pick a couple numbers between 15 and 25. And, and, and what we're going to do now is grab damage and plug him in right oh god oh you ain't gonna you ain't gonna do it like that for me bro you ain't gonna do it like that for me you know what i'm saying like just snap oh snap I'm, I'm, well I'm, I'm trying to fix it you know I'm, I'm come on you know what i'm saying help me out now there we go there we go okay but see now what we need now what we need is we need a timeline to make it fade out you know what i'm saying like a little timeline Okay, I don't know. At time, we'll tell you what we're going to name it Fade, bro. We're going to name it Fade because that's what we're going to do. We're going to plug it into Fade or, or a play from start. We're going to double click, open the timeline, set it to two seconds. We're going to have a float, right? Just a float. And what we're going to do is we're going to not name it because I don't care right now. We're going to shift, hold shift and click. And at the time, we're going to set it at zero. And at the value, we're going to set it to one, right? Because it's, it's opaque. It's going to be one. We're going to hold shift and click again. And at the time two, we're going to set the value to be zero. Now you can see a little line. You can click these little lines right here. Boone will straighten it up for you. You can see that we're going to be completely opaque, but over two seconds, we're going to do that. Now you can kind of change that a little bit. You, you can set your curve, whatever. You know, I'm showing you how you can do this. We'll go ahead and close that. And we have our new track that I did name. I probably named it Fade Overtime or Fade Lerp. Now what we're going to do is we're going to drag this damage text, right? And we need to set the render opacity. So you set render wait 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 keep looking for it set render opacity okay and you'll see that it's a float and that makes perfect sense because that's what we're updating so we want to plug that into there so that's what we're doing so far so i know that's a little bit of a mess we're creating we're we're, we're, we're grabbing we're casting to our widget we're getting some damage text setting it to be a certain number you know based off what we did here at the beginning and then we're going to make it fade out over time now all we can do is go in here and hope to god it works bro because it might not boom okay oh snap did you see that and yeah, yeah i get it my text is a little crooked you know what i'm saying i'm not gonna lie it's not the best i've ever done you know what i'm saying but but every time we create it it's, it, it's creating all kind of texts for it you know what i mean it's, it's just doing it you know what i'm saying and again i'll probably move it around make sure the text is exactly where i want it you know above the mesh and i'm probably gonna go ahead and do that by going to the rock go back to the rock here where it's set to 200 and just for now let's set it to 300 because that way it doesn't geek us out right let's go back in here and just double check see if that's high enough because if i because i got to get high enough <laughs> okay it's, it's a little crooked but that's the point you know we can kind of see it so what we're going to do to make our lives a little easier is we're going to go back to our text right here we're going back to this text right here bro and we're going to go down here okay we're looking for the we're going to add like a little outline to it and the reason you can tell is because we can't really see what's going on sometimes and you can you can change a lot of stuff here you can go into your font you can go you can see your little stuff like here you'll have a little outline amount you see a little outline and or, or sorry not the outline but you have like the, the but here's the outline you can set like five but no i'm gonna set it to one right here i'm gonna set it just one and now what's cool is if we go back in here and shoot this shoot this rock we can see we got a little text we can see it a little better right bro you know what i'm talking about it's dragging all kind of stuff now the only thing actually we want to do now is we want to set it up to where this other sequence makes it go up makes the text go up over time so what we want to do is we want to create another variable so let's get the actor location okay get an actor location yeah, oh, there she is. And let's promote it to a variable. And we're going to name it IL. Okay, just name it IL. And that stands for initial location. That's what we're going to do. So, boom, in this second sequence here, which is happening at the exact same time, we're going to do that. Okay, so now we have an initial location. So now we're going to create another timeline, bro. We're going to create another timeline. We're going to name it uh, movement. You know what I'm saying? We're going we're, we're to name it movement. We're going we're gonna to name it. We're going to name it movement, okay? It's what we're going to do. Is we're going we're to name it movement. Now, here's the thing. It needs to also be two seconds long. We want it to be the same size. Add a float. Do the same thing. Check it out. Except zero and zero. See what I did there? 
Okay, see what it does? Shift click again. The time is two at the end and one. So this 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 line's going up, bro. And we again feel free to toy with it, but blah blah. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the actor location, right? So we're gonna set the actor location right here. Boom. Okay. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little lerp in action. So we're gonna update this, right? That's cool. That's fine. And then we're going to do a lerp right here. Type in the word lerp. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna lerp a vector. We're going to LARP the vector. And what it's doing is it's saying from zero to one, where are we going? I'll tell you where we're going, bro. We're going to grab the IL, the initial location, plug it into A. And we're going to go from there to IL plus, uh, what do you think, 150? You guys feel good about 150? I think 150 is probably pretty good. I'm just kind of toying around, you know what I mean? I'm, it might be too much. But here's the thing. This is just me personally, but we need if, if if just setting the render opacity to zero doesn't mean that the blueprint isn't there. It's still there. So after both of these are done, I'm going to grab off a of finished and type in destroy actor. So that means that after this is all done, after it's taking place, it'll get rid of that of that blueprint that we spawned because this was spawned in. Remember, this is this is spawned in every time we shoot the rock. You know what I'm saying? Every time we shoot, we we spawn in this bad baby. So I want to make sure that we destroy it once it's done all of its little movements here. Now let's go check it out, baby. Let's jump in here and don't be scared because we got this gun. Boom! Yeah, but let's shoot the rock. Boom! Okay, look at it. That little floating text a little bit. Now you can decide the size. You know what I'm saying? You can sit here and freaking kill it. You know what I'm saying? Just don't be boom. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You got all kind of text. And again, you can really get kind of a lot more, um, a lot more, let's see, what's, looking, what, what's the word I'm looking for? You can get a lot more random with it. You know what I'm saying? So, like, check this out. Um, we could maybe uh, set the timeline to be, you could, you could set the, the, the timeline to be different lengths or possibly even cooler. You could set it to spawn at different places. Like you could uh, break this, right? Let's, let's split this pin. And you know what I'm saying? And then what we're going to do is do it right here where the 300, the Z. We'll do a random enter. Oh, oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Do a random float. Do a random float. And instead of it just being 300, we'll do uh, like between 275 and 325. Right, so now what you've done is you've kind of set it to where the text is kind of going to bounce up on the Z and Y axis. Now, you could do the same thing with the, with the rest, but the point is now you'll notice that it kind of floats around there. Okay, does a couple things. It's, it's getting real nasty. And you could do the same thing here. You could literally, you know, these are set to zero. You know, it's obviously set to zero. But you could set, you could set uh, let's do a random floating range here uh, between negative uh, 20 and 20. Okay. And oh God, we should probably. Well, that's right. That's right. Copy and paste that and put another one in here. And let's see what that does. You know what I mean? So now we we'll kind of like make it bounce around a little bit all over the place. You know what I'm saying? Make it make it bounce around a little bit. Okay. It's got. It's kind of just. It's doing its thing. And that's the thing is, it's honestly not bouncing around too much. So if it was me, I would probably do like a negative fifty and fifty. You know what I'm saying? Negative fifty and fifty. At this point, I'm just playing around, guys. So I hope you guys have already learned what we've been teaching in the tutorial because we're done. And at this point, I'm just goofing off. But guys, that's pretty much it. The point is now I've got it kind of bouncing around. Yeah, baby. That, that's pretty cool. You know, we got some text. We could, you could change a lot of stuff about it. You could have random sizes. You know what I'm saying? You could do all kinds of stuff. But guys, thanks for watching. Joshua with the Proud Productions. Boom! Ooh, what are talking about? We do big things here. Guys, we almost have 2,000 subscribers. You guys are amazing. Again, took a little week and a half off there for my birthday, and we've been working hard on this channel for almost two years. So I just want to take a little break. Thank you guys for being patient. We love you. We miss you, and we want to be on you, and we're going to be eventually. But guys, go subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit up all the links are in the description of the video for our Facebook, our SoundCloud, our itch.io, our Bandcamp, anything. All of that different stuff. You can go check out our music, purchase our music. We've got three EPs out now, guys. Three different EPs out by Deprived. All kinds of cover tracks, a new cover track coming, and some more royalty free music for you guys to put in your games and your um, films and stuff like that. But guys, I hope you learned a little something. A ninth UMG tutorial. Again, I wasn't sure if it should be UMG or Blueprints, but I want what UMG because I play a little Rochambeau and nope, not very good at it. So guys, again, thanks for watching. You guys are awesome. It's good to be back. I'll see you guys in just a few days with a new tutorial. We got all kind of cool stuff to learn and I do promise I have a lot of people asking about Minecraft. That is our main objective. We're just getting a couple things ironed out for it. It's coming very soon. Okay. So guys, thanks again. Love you. Miss ya. Peace. <laughs>